episode of PharmaVision. Today we're here at the Pfizer headquarters in New York, New York to speak with Craig Lipset, the Director of Clinical Research at Pfizer. Uh, so welcome, Craig. Thank you. Glad to be here. Great. Craig, if you could start by giving us a bit of background on what you're working on and tell us about the recent uh, DIA award that you received. So my work at Pfizer has been focused around improving our clinical development process by focusing on our patients. So from a scientific perspective, this has been working in our molecular medicine group around understanding sources of variability and how different patients respond to our medicines. If we can understand that at a molecular level, we can improve our drug development through better, better targeting, through um, better patient selection and stratification. Ultimately, the potential is there for companion diagnostics to our medicines and the ability to deliver personalized therapies to our patients, getting the right drug to the right patient at the right time. I also work with our strategy and business development groups and with our biopharmaceutical business organization around re-examining how we are engaging patients in clinical trials. And this involves rethinking those engagements across the whole continuum and trying to find ways to improve that process as well. I'm, I'm honored to have uh, been the recipient of DIA's Outstanding Service Award this year. Uh, I've been a member of the DIA for over a decade now. Um, the DIA is a nonprofit membership organization. It is a neutral forum, and in that way, it's been a great vehicle for me to be able to get involved and share ideas with a community, a global community, of colleagues involved in drug development from industry, from academia, from government organizations. Um, in my roles within the DIA, I've been involved in program committees, advisory boards, their um, drug information journals, uh, editorial board, the annual meeting uh, program committee. And in each of those vehicles, I've found it a great opportunity to be involved in innovation in drug development and test and share new ideas. Craig, looking at the current state of clinical research, uh, such as the uh, recent technology trends of uh, more technology at the patient point of care, um, how is this affecting clinical research today? We are obviously in a very exciting time in terms of uh, change for healthcare in this country. Uh, one of the uh, prevailing trends is around making healthcare more patient centric, and we see this with payers implementing consumer directed healthcare plans. We see it with opportunities around health information technology. Uh, so for instance, there are a lot of uh, folks who are very enthusiastic about electronic health records. And as hospitals have and other clinical centers have uptake of electronic health records, that information can then become available to patients and consumers through personal health records. And which technologies in particular do you think are going to be affecting clinical research in the future? So we certainly see a, a growing impact of the use of technologies around molecular medicine as it relates to drug development, around understanding better target selection, better patient selection and stratification, and, and enabling that future of personalized medicine. But we also see a number of technologies that map very well to trends and changes in the healthcare space around how we engage patients. Um, so there are interesting novel approaches to patient recruitment that we're starting to see taking advantage of that highly engaged e-patient, that online patient. Um, Pfizer is very involved uh, in this space with a recent partnership with Private Access where we're developing a very novel online platform for patient engagement and making sure that patients can feel comfortable and secure sharing health information with uh, interested researchers. Uh, Pfizer is also very involved in using YouTube now to uh, reach out to patients around recruitment and studies. And others outside of Pfizer in the uh, broader research community are, are looking to explore how to use things like Twitter and Facebook to reach out and engage patient communities online. Similar also, uh, there are interesting tools, physiologic monitors, for capturing data directly from a patient, their activity, their quality of sleep. Um, patients and consumers are using this in the healthcare space. We're increasingly using these tools in the clinical research space, and we'll hopefully start to see those worlds increasingly uh, come together. So Craig, what improvements do you see uh, forthcoming in clinical research that will help in receiving patient data more quickly and with better accuracy? Sure. So uh, it's hard to quantify the exact and specific benefits we would see in clinical research through better patient engagement, but one would expect to see better design studies. 
um, through using perhaps some patient-generated research for hypothesis generation or through engaging patient groups to test the instruments that we're using for data capture from patients, those validated uh, patient-reported outcome instruments as an example. We should expect to see better trial execution, so specifically improved recruitment, improved retention, improved patient compliance if we have a better engaged patient population participating in our studies. And hopefully we should see improved data quality, that where those patients are engaged, uh, when they're sharing data, that we should be able to make that better quality data, and including using technologies to help to enable that. So rather than using um, perhaps data tools where uh, diary data might not be as, as precise around the time and date of being recorded, using more appropriate new technologies to help to facilitate that with patients and remind the patients. Um, but likewise, this should be good for clinical trials, but it should also be good for patients. And an engaged patient in our study could mean that it is a patient where we are sharing data at the end of the study back with the patient. So as an example, where in the past um, clinical trial data might be aggregated and siloed away, um, technologies now exist to help us to share an individual's data back with them at the end of the study. And could that improve uh, their management of their health with their treating physician if they had access to that data? Um, likewise, being able to share lay summaries from the study back with the patient who participated that they might not have access to the peer-reviewed journals, either access to the journal or access to be able to understand the, the conclusions in the journal. We should be able to share that information with the participant who gave of themselves in order for us to have that learning. So Craig, what do you see as the main technology trend affecting the future of clinical research? I'm looking forward to a point of increased convergence between these trends in healthcare and these possible trends and movements we can do in clinical trials and clinical research. If patients are increasingly engaged and they're accessing their health information, they're sharing that health information in communities, what would be the implications for clinical trials? If patients are self-tracking and self-quantifying using iPhone apps for tracking their diary, uh, their food intake, their physiologic monitoring through uh, devices they may be wearing. How does that map to the ePro technologies that we look to use in clinical trials? If patients are accessing their genetic information and being given tools to understand that genetic information, how would that impact our potential to recruit patients into studies? So I think that 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 convergence is somewhat inevitable and it's important for us to look and follow these trends and to understand how we can take advantage of those trends to improve the clinical development process that's in desperate need of, of innovation. Well, thanks Craig for joining us today. My pleasure, thank you. And thank you to our viewers.